Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lent Services this fourth Wednesday in Lent. Um, as we continue to meet virtually, there are a few announcements to make note of. Um, as, the, as the weeks have gone on, we found different ways to get together, and, um, and we've been beginning the process of utilizing Zoom technology to have meetings. So if you are on one of our church's committees and have been wondering if you should be meeting together, uh, if you're interested in meeting, give me a call, please, and I will help you set up a meeting through Zoom um, over, I'll send out an in invitation through email and help you get connected through Zoom. Um, some things that are coming up this current week, on, on um, Sunday, we'll meet next for worship. That'll be at 9.30. And then next week, on Tuesday night at 3 p.m., the Sunday School will have Tuesday time, which will be like Sunday School, and it will be a Zoom meeting um, online. Watch your emails, um, Sunday School families, because we'll be doing something interactive and creative, and you will need some resources to, to meet. So we'll be sending out an email soon with what you should gather prior to the uh, Tuesday night time. So 3 p.m. Tuesday is Tuesday time, and that will happen every Tuesday night, um, at least through April. And at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays is Singing with Lauren, and we had a great evening last night. Thanks, Lauren and Parker, for and puppies, because it was a wonderful <laughs> evening. Um, thank you for everybody who submitted song requests. Think about what you'd like to sing next week. She'll be looking for song requests for next week, too. Thursday next week, um, wait, go back. Wednesday next week, we'll have youth group Zoom time. Um, at 4.30 p.m. and then Latin service will start on Facebook Live at 6.30 p.m. And then on Thursday at 7 p.m. we have cooking with Pastor Carla and we'll be making communion bread. Hopefully you got the email from me about the recipe for um, communion bread. You'll need some ingredients if you want to cook alongside me. The most important one to maybe note that you probably don't have in your kitchen is molasses. So if you need to get some molasses, maybe do that this week when you're at the grocery store. Um, and then Holy Week comes <coughs> the following week, and our schedule pretty much remains the same, but on, instead of Wednesday night worship, we'll have 6.30 p.m. worship on Monday, Thursday, and on Good Friday on Facebook Live, and then on Easter Sunday morning, we'll worship together at 9.30. And some of the sad parts about Easter Sunday morning is we usually have... Um, we usually have Easter sunrise service done by our youth group, followed by breakfast. And we don't get to have breakfast together, so I'm bummed about that. But I was thinking, there's no reason not to have breakfast, so maybe plan your breakfast. You can either have it prior to worship or after worship, but plan an Easter Sunday breakfast at home. And, um, and if you have any great recipes that you are dying to share, please share them. I'm enjoying new cookie recipes lately. So. Those are my announcements for the day. Anybody else have any to share? With us tonight, um, Chris Meyer is here to deliver a message, and Lauren is leading us in Holy Evening Prayer, and Tiffany is making this video happen. Um, so we gather for worship, and we light our candles together. If you're at home, light your candle and remember Christ's light that binds us together, maybe, hopefully. And it shines throughout the world. Let us gather for worship and sing. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the
T. <laughs> Coca-Cola goes down a little better for children than tea would. And she didn't stop there. We would have to have the chocolate chip cookies. She knew that a long day of work needed some time to rest and relax together, have a little bit of tea. talk and keep our relationship strong. She wasn't just the taskmaster making sure that we were getting our jobs done. She wasn't um, the person who gave us chore after chore because seven people made a lot of mess and we had a lot to clean up. She was somebody who wanted to give us a second round of energy, a second chance, a time to get together. It wasn't lost time for our work. It was time that was well spent and definitely a fond memory for me. Everyday life can be very monotonous or it can be full of small surprises, <coughs> depending on how you look at it. One year I finally listened to a hymn. It's a sending hymn, but uh, it is also a Thanksgiving hymn. And the second verse goes like this. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will face. Now I can tell you I do not face emptying the dishwasher with praise and thanksgiving. But with praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, we should be looking at our everyday tasks because God has given them to us so that we can give praise to him through our everyday work. Do we face the everyday tasks with praise and thanksgiving? Do we try to bring something special to those monotonous times of the day? Think about it next time you are hard at work and you need a little break or you see somebody else hard at work who needs a little break and a reminder of the wonderful blessings God has given us. John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, to the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of the ones at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one whom was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. The Gospel of the Lord. one of the most 
stressful ordeals of my entire life. And that's an understatement. And now it was time to celebrate. My brother was alive. My brother, who had been dead and buried in the tomb for three days, was alive. <clears throat> it was time to party. And my mother taught me well. I knew how to throw a party. A party had food and lots of it. But then, huh, then there was Mary. How do you solve a problem like Mary? Her head in the clouds, can't finish anything she starts, prone to getting herself in all kinds of trouble. Don't get me wrong, she can be helpful. She, I can sometimes count on her. She has good intentions, but she often gets sidetracked. So there I was, up to my elbows in flour, and Mary, nowhere to be found again. That's me. I had things under control anyways, because I always have things under control. House neat as a pin. Food on the table. Flowers cut. Neatly arranged. Every hair in my head in place. Thank you very much. I had finished it all in time. Not too early, not too late. The guests arrived. I welcomed them and seated them. It was quite a houseful. There was Jesus, the 12 apostles, and some extended family. And of course, my brother Lazarus. My brother Lazarus was alive. Everything was going smoothly. Everyone was having a great time until my sister interrupted everything. That's Mary for you, flamboyant, impulsive, wears her heart on a sleeve. With Mary, there is no halfway. She does everything 100%. And that day was no different. You know, come to think of it, maybe we're more alike than I'd like to admit. She came into the room slightly late as usual, carrying a pound of perfume. And not just any perfume, mind you, nard, pure nard. Not from concentrate, no water added, imported all the way from the Himalaya mountains, wherever that is. Then she did the strangest thing. She anointed Jesus' feet with it, poured all that wonderful, beautiful, expensive, potent, hard to come by perfume all over his feet. The house was full of perfume, so much so that it almost made me sick. What was she thinking? And is that, if that weren't enough, there was the hair thing. <sighs> Had my mother taught her nothing? That's no way for a respectable girl to act. She left out her hair and she gently wiped his feet with it. <clears throat> if it hadn't been for the fact that I knew my sister, and I knew that this was the only way she could think of to thank Jesus for bringing our brother back home to us, I would have died on the spot. If my mother were alive, she'd be dead. But I didn't have to. I didn't have to say anything at all, because Judas beat me to it. Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? Huh. Cha-ching. I could hear the dollar signs in his eyes and the absolute disdain he had for my sister. I sincerely doubt he was worried about the poor. Judas never got it. He never understood any of the hard stuff. The stuff my sister Mary was so good at. 
He stomped all over her, fury, her feelings, and I was furious. No one treats my sister that way except for me, thank you very much. It's one thing for me to pick on my sister, but he had no right. And I was just about to say so when Jesus beat me to it. Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. <sighs> to this day, Jesus' words knocked the wind right out of me. Suddenly it all made sense. What had I been thinking? There was so much more to life than cooking and cleaning and working and worrying about all the details and money and you name it. Just a few days ago, my brother had died. Died! The brother that I loved so deeply, that I still love so deeply, was in a tomb, never to be hugged or touched or talked to ever again. But now, because of Jesus, he was alive. Here I was, with a second chance to say and do all the things that I had meant to do before. But once again, I had buried myself alive in tasks. Cooking, cleaning, worrying, tittering over silly things that are here today and gone tomorrow and seldom, if ever, remembered for more than a minute. Had I not learned anything from all of this? But Mary. Mary was bent over our master's feet, bathing them in beautiful scent, wiping them with her hair, bearing her soul to the one who had made Lazarus' life, new life possible. <coughs> Mary had it right all along. Why save all these precious things for death? Whether they're the scents of exotic perfume or the precious words, I love you, or the redeeming words, I forgive you, or the life-giving affirmation, you are my top priority. Life is just too short to bury ourselves alive in work. Life is too short to harbor hatred and resentment. Life is too short to worry about what might happen tomorrow. Life is far too precious to squander on such trivial matters. So I vowed from that point forward not to always get buried in my kitchen. There's a time for serving and a time for being with the ones that you love. And I learned that none too soon. The very next day, Jesus and his disciples left for Jerusalem. Less than a week later, Jesus hung on a cross, dying for my sins. For the things that I had done, and for the things that I had left undone. I wish I would have spent more time sitting at my master's feet. But as for Lazarus, as he later told me, Christ is all about second chances. And, se and the second chance for me has already begun. Do you have time for another cup of coffee? I love the time that we spend together. Amen.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we journey through this time of social distancing, send your Holy Spirit to clear our hearts and minds. We worry about many things. Give us hearts that pay attention to the things that matter most. Draw us near to each other, even as we are physically separated. And even more, draw our hearts near to you. Open our eyes, that we might see the needs of our neighbors, all those that share the world with us, and love them as we love ourselves. Where our resources are short, Lord, please provide. Where we have enough, help us to share. We pray for high school seniors and their families navigating the unknown months ahead. We pray for those who are especially lonely. We pray for health care workers, their families, and all who, they care, all who are in their care. We pray for those who are called to be leaders in such a time as this. We pray for those who are unemployed or underemployed and for businesses who are faithfully trying to care for their workers and their customers. We pray for those who are ill, for those who are grieving the death of loved ones. We pray that even in this, you would open our eyes to see the goodness of our loving God at work in the world. Especially tonight, we pray for Carlene's family from Waverly. Enfold all of her community with your love and presence as they grieve her death. Especially we pray for the Goings family who mourns her loss <coughs> and for all of the students that she cared for as a bus driver. Help us to remember that you, Lord, are the God of new life and that even in the midst of death, you provide a way forward. Remind us, Lord, that as spring comes, and plants once again begin to grow, you bring life. You have seen us through the valley of the shadow of death before, and we can trust that you will see us through this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you.
be to God.